Iran has new strategic missile bases on the shores of the Persian Gulf. According to local news reports, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps unveiling the new facilities in the country's southern region near the Strait of Hormuz. Top commander of the IRGC, General Hussein Salami, says that Iran's ability to defend itself is getting stronger, adding that this was just one of the, quote, several IRGC naval strategic missile facilities. The IRGC is designated by the United States as a terrorist organization. The comments and unveiling appeared to be part of a series of moves this week aimed at increasing Iran's leverage before Joe Biden becomes the U.S. president on January 20th. Meanwhile, the U.S. State Department is calling out Iran for expelling United Nations nuclear watchdogs. While Donald Trump famously exited the GCPOA nuclear deal back in 2018, the inspectors served as a enforcers of international law, not necessarily of that deal. Iran's recent announcement that it has resumed 20% uranium enrichment, bringing them closer to a bomb, has caused its enemy countries to be cautious. The State Department is urging universal condemnation over Iran's expulsion of the international inspectors, calling them the world's top sponsors of terrorism. Okay, let's bring in Dr. Fadi Esmail into the conversation. He's a research fellow at the International Institute for Counterterrorism and at the IDC Herzliya. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, it looks like Iran is uh, flexing its muscles just before Biden takes over the White House. Aren't we expecting Biden to warm up to Iran a little bit and maybe re-enter the nuclear deal. So what is the strategy here with this last minute show of force? Are they afraid Trump could do something in his last days as president? Good evening. Uh, well, as far as uh, could Trump do something in his final days? Yeah, of course he could. Although uh, the probability for that, like if we're talking about the major military attack against Iran, is not very high probability. That's one thing. The other thing is about Mr. Biden and his ability to go back to the JCPOA, um, that will also be very difficult. Uh, and the reason for it is that the concerns that were that were uh, uh, presented during the, the administration, the Trump administration, remain there. Issues of um, ballistic missiles, issues of terrorism, issues of uh, Iran's uh, interference with uh, all political um, uh, aspects of very far outside its borders in the Middle East, even far outside the Middle East itself. It reaches South, South America and places like that. All those issues still remain. Uh, they haven't changed. And uh, therefore, the ability of uh, President Link Biden simply to uh, to you turn back to where we were about six, seven years ago, that is, is nearly impossible. Um, also, another thing is um, uh, President-elect Biden more than once said that he is not going to be a third Obama administration. That's one thing. The other thing is he doesn't want to be a second uh, Trump administration. So what will he do? Uh, he will have to find uh, a way to uh, differentiate himself from both presidents, Obama and Trump, while maintaining American interests in the Middle East and uh, keeping Iran in check. It is not going to be an easy act to do, uh, but he will try for sure. Dr. Ismail, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you for having me. Have a great evening.